This lesson will focus on how to use rulers and guides with three bonus tips at the end, including why guides can be helpful when creating YouTube videos. Don't be fooled by the last part. It can be helpful for all Canva creators. We're going to start by talking about designing with rulers. And no, I'm not talking about the Queen of England. Turning on rulers is very simple. Go to File and go down until you see one called Show Rulers. It's that simple. And the measurement of the ruler is going to be the measurement of the project. It's going to be above the project and beside the project. And depending on your project, your ruler might be in pixels, inches, millimeters, or centimeters. Here's an example of it in inches. This is an eight and a half inch by 11 inch project. And that's what my ruler is in. It's in inches. Let me show you a keyboard shortcut for Windows. Now, hopefully if you are on other computers, it will give you the keyboard shortcut for that as well. But for my computer, it's Shift R. Now pay attention to the ruler at the top. It's going to disappear. Shift R. R. Shift R. Very simple. The last thing you need to know about rulers is they can be turned on and off for each project. So here it is on. Let me go ahead and file and unshow the ruler. Now I go to this project and it's still on. And you might think, well, that's because it's it was already in the tab. Well, let me find one that I know that had it on and see if it's still there. There we go. It's still there. Remember to look at the video description for the timestamp chapters so you can watch and rewatch the segments you need. The ruler in the project is measured in the measurement the project is in. The ruler is on for that project, so it could be on for one project and turned off for another. And the keyboard shortcut for Windows is Shift R. That turns the ruler on and it turns the ruler off. What are guidelines? Well, guidelines are lines, who didn't see that coming, that can help you with your design. They can help you with spacing and alignment of your design. How do I show them? How do I hide them? How do I move them? These are great questions. First, I already have them shown over here at the file, there's something called Show Guides. It's right underneath Show Rulers. The shortcut for it while we're here to Show Guides is Control or Command Semicolon. So let's go uh, Control Semicolon and they go away. Control Semicolon, they come back. How do I get more lines? Go up to your ruler or here on the side, left click your mouse and drag a line to wherever you want it. How do I get rid of them? You just drag it off the page. You can do it to the top ruler here with the guideline or the left ruler. And if you see a pink box pop up, that's actually your margin. It's a temporary margin line. And while we're here, let me show you where that can be found. 
show margin and it will just show it to you in a very light gray but it's there all right what are they how can you get them when are they useful when aren't they useful let's just say that i use them in this design I knew that I didn't want the word designing to be above a certain point. So I added guidelines to help me align my words. Where else can I find them? Well, you found them in files. You can do the control semicolon or command semicolon, but you can also right click and add horizontal guides or add a vertical guide. What else is there? There's clear guides. Let's click that and see what happens. <gasps> they went away. Why? Why? Where did they go? Let's go up here to file. It says show guides. Why are they gone? It's because when you clicked clear guides, you got rid of all the guides. But if that happens, don't worry. You can fix it as long as you don't leave the project. Just click undo and the guidelines will show back up. And then if you don't want them there, you just don't want them there. You want them hidden. That's when you can do control semicolon or command semicolon. There we go. And when you drop a new one in, they show back up. Did you see that? Let's hide them again. I'm going to drop another ruler down. And look, they showed back up. What do you think? Should we move on? I want you to double check your subscription status and notification bells. Turning them on will alert you when Canva Tutorials by Like It or Not premieres new videos. Chatting Live gives you a chance to ask your questions about using Canva. Let's move on to bonus tips. Our first one is about Print Bleed. Turning on Print Bleed is going to save you time and money. You've created an invitation or created something to print and you go and get it printed. You get a bunch printed. And when you look at them, there are white edges on, well, the edges. And you're confused because your design doesn't have any of that. Well, it does. Go up here to File, Show Print Bleed, and you will see that there are white edges on the side of this after all. How do we fix that? Fix it before you take it to the printer. Because if you need to reprint it, then it's gonna cost you money. If you decide to chop it off, it's gonna cost you time. And getting them reprinted is gonna cost you time too, cause you gotta get them reprinted and go pick them up or get them delivered either way. So here's an image with a print bleed. Let me just pull an image for you to show you how to fix it. So here's our image, set it as background, and look, here's white edges on the side. Here's a zoom button. You can take and you will see that it's there on the side. Now you might like that look and that look might be fine for you, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix it. Double click the image and the whole image will show up. Little white circles, pull on them and make it larger and then position it to where you want it making sure the white edges are covered click out of it look at your top sides and bottom you can even zoom out if you want to double check and then you go oh I don't want that cut off so just move it over a little more just in case it is turned off, right? And there we go. Here's our invitation. What do we do? That's right, we double click it. Double click the background. Make it larger. 
position it, fix it where you want it, scroll down, click out, and let's see. Oh, I don't know if you can tell, there's a small little sliver of white here. You see, right there. So, double click, position it for just a little bit, click out of it, and now it's fixed. If you have any more questions about print bleed, write print bleed in the top in the question area, and margins, bleeds, and crop marks will turn up and it will give you all the answers that you need. The help button. It's really helpful. Tip number two helps YouTubers. You might be curious about how guides are going to help YouTubers. And the answer is really very simple. They're gonna help you from putting in text too far down on your page and that will be covered up by the timeline. What do I mean by this? Let's check out the channel, like it or not, and plug, this is my other channel. And I did a video called The Very Hungry Squirrel, Squirrel Bird Showdown, funny videos. You're gonna see this timeline. I don't want any text down here that's going to be covered up by the timeline and I don't want any text that's going to be here that's going to be covered up by this little eye. And that's how I used guides. That allowed me to keep all my text and all the important stuff in the middle. Here is a screenshot from Brit Girls Go Stateside. I covered up their faces. I just think it's cute. But you see, you don't want any text down here at all. And you don't want any text up here. It's gonna be blocked by something, especially if an info card were to pop out at that time. So that's how I use guides to my advantage. How do you think you could use guides to your advantage? For bonus tip number three, we're going to talk alignment and how guides can help you align your text. Say you've got a bunch of things on multiple pages and you all want the text to be at the same height. You could wing it. Don't recommend that. But you could wing it. You could also use an element of a line to help you line things up. But these temporary guides help you so much more. Let me add a blank page so that you can see where I have them. I've got the top line there. I've got my left line there. I knew where I wanted things lined up on the page. Here it is. I knew that I wanted the top of my word lesson, just not the actual text box. If I move it it would be a lot lower and I didn't want it lower. I wanted the actual word lesson to kiss that purple line and I wanted it, the text box to kiss the left, the vertical line. Well, let me check my other, let me check two of my pages and see whether they are lined up. They are not. So, Let's do that. Let's kiss my word to the top, align to the left, align to the left, align to the left, and then I'm going to select, 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 position space vertically. And I think they're not quite aligned, so I'm going to go ahead and align to the left. Let's look at this one. Nope. Now, for this one, I actually don't want it lined up way over here, but I do want it lined here, and I want to position it to the center. 
and then I can figure out where I want the organizer part and line it to the center. So the guides just help me figure out where I need my text. How do you think you'll use guides in the future? Comment below and let me know. Let's finish up this lesson, shall we? We've learned about rulers, guides, and print screen. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll happily address any concerns you have. It might even inspire me to create new content like this. Thanks for learning with Canva tutorials by Like It or Not. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed when I create new lessons. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.